You know, north of the Golden Gate Bridge is truly, without exaggeration, one of the most beautiful spots on Earth. The Russian River, Napa Valley, Sonoma, wine country. And if you're like me, you like to get up there as often as possible. Our guest tonight, Mark Vogler, is the co-founder of a group called Out in the Vineyard that helps uh, people like me get up there and enjoy the wine country. Welcome. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, I also understand that uh, not only do you work in wine country, but you're that, that rare person, an actual native of a little town called Healdsburg, which would make you what, Healdsburgian? Heel, Healdsburger. A Healdsburger. A Healdsburger. That's cute. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I am a native. Um, grew up there, born and bred, um, left at high school, went to, went to L.A., found myself and came out. And uh -huh. uh, when I came back, actually a job offer brought me back up. I started looking around realizing no one is sort of supporting the gay and lesbian community in terms of wine. Uh-huh and realized it was time to do something about that. Sonoma County, Napa Valley um, are luxury destinations globally with great food, great lifestyle, and um, the gays love that. Right? Well, and it's yeah. interesting you say that there was no concentrated uh, marketing effort to right. the LGBT community, but I know that I came to California in 1988 mm -hmm. and I heard you know, right away about the gayest little town in America, Guerneville. Right. But there wasn't anyone really marketing specifically to that community. That's true. Um, Guerneville is is uh, one of those places like Key West, uh -huh. that was sort of way out, um, off the beaten path. You had to be in the know to be to in the be know. That's right. Yeah. And what has happened, I think, with the advent of um, internet, um, with a, a burgeoning millennial market where we have had um, they. I wish it was we. Um, yeah. They have had more exposure. Right. They haven't had to be quite so in and segmented. Yeah. That people want to go to wineries. They want to do mainstream things. They want to go to the French Laundry or they want to go to Hotel Healdsburg. But no one was helping them do that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I came back up, I joined um, Treasury Wine Estates, which w at the time was a division of Foster's like the beer company. 50% of their global revenue was wine. Mm -hmm. And 50 wineries globally, 54 actually. And we weren't even on the radar. You know, it took me a, a few years going, why, why are they not marketing to this $750 billion segment? Um, who has disposable income, who loves luxury and lifestyle and wine. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's farming. You know, it's, it's beer and spirits figured out 20 years ago, but, but that's urban, right? And, and uh, wine country is country. It's, it's, country it's an agricultural. It's, it's, it's ag, Well, you for know, sure. you, you, you raise an interesting issue uh, that not only were there not marketing campaigns yeah. aimed at getting the LGBT community up there, but correct me if I'm wrong, uh, having lived here now mm -hmm. 26 years, for a long time, I got the perception that even though I had met openly gay vintners and yeah. owners of vineyards, coming out in the wine industry seemed about as hard as coming out in Hollywood. Or correct oh, me if yeah. you think I'm no, wrong. No, I think you're absolutely right. That's I think, is changing now, and I think we have some credit for that. Uh -huh. um, coming into the wine business, um, winemakers were not out, for sure, because they're dealing with um, farmhands, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, all the way down the line, other agriculture type mm -hmm. um, workers. On the marketing side, however, that's a little bit different, although in an organization that was 800 people with Treasury, I was probably the token. I uh -huh. mean, I got in and, you know, I came out of L.A., I'd been out in the film business and, right. and um, you know, said, well, you need to do this, and people didn't really get it. And, and uh, finally we convinced them, I convinced them, I said, we have to try this. Right. Let's do a tea dance at Behringer, and they agreed. And within two weeks, we had two weeks of marketing, 350 people as an AIDS fundraiser for the local hospital. Right. And that was really the first time I thought, you know what, this can be done. This out in the vineyard, let's, let's help the gay community understand mm -hmm. and find um, wineries that are accessible. Part of it was when I joined the wine business as their online marketer. Um, friends from LA, friends from New York would call me and say, oh, you're in wine now, what wineries do I go to? What restaurants can my husband and I, or my right. wife and I, go eat and feel comfortable in yes. farming America? Right. And I started getting that almost daily, those emails and phone calls, and then friends and friends of friends and friends of friends and friends. And, friends and, and finally, I thought, you know, this we have to do something about this. Why don't we have a, right. a Hamptons or Fire Island of San Francisco in wine country? It's, uh -huh. a, it's an amazing lifestyle, and I love the lifestyle. Yeah. Now, do you think wine country, the definition of it, has, has expanded? I mean, you know, Guerneville is, you know, I, what was that movie, Sideways? Sideways, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you hear about Pinot, and then I have friends who live in Napa that are like, oh, no, Napa's better. And then, I mean, all over, it seems <laughs> like the definition of wine country is expanding. I mean, sure. what is wine country now? You know, wine country really is, well, it ha it's still 
growing. Uh -huh. You know, we have Paso Robles. We have, there's actually, I found out recently, there is a burgeoning wine um, region in Malibu. Temesc uh, uh, Topanga Canyon and uh -huh. Malibu have some new, so it's it's really expanding. But really historically, it's been Napa, Sonoma, right, County. So we're going to see out in the vineyard down in Malibu, maybe. Or? Um, we might actually. Yeah. Um, I was just recently traveling, and I was on a on a boat, and it turns out the um, conservator for the land trust that. Uh, Barbara Streisand donated all her houses to, and Malibu is a big wine fan, and he invited me down. That would and be about the gayest event. I think that would be in the, the world yeah. a wine tasting for out of the vineyard at Babs. Right. I mean, exactly. right? Right. Totally. It would probably be, you couldn't beat that. We're taking reservations now. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. We have, but but <laughs> but seriously, there is a growing um, interest in wine. You know, beer and spirits again figured it out 20 years ago, right. and uh, we have this great interest in wine, and so. We formed out in the vineyard to do that, and it's been hugely successful. We've been around about two and a half years. Wow. We do every March, we charter out the Napa Valley wine train and make it the big gay wine train. Uh -huh. And to your point, there weren't gay winemakers out. And, and now you're getting that. And now we're getting that. So I just reached out to people I knew who were winemakers or vintners, vineyard owners, and said, would you come do this winemaker dinner? So we do a five course paired winemaker dinner on the train and everybody said yes and and you know I was a little curious about why was that so easy and why hasn't mm -hmm. it been done before no one ever asked them yeah it's like you, you know you don't ask you don't get anything right you know well you know we're not on a train wine, today but <laughs> but I understand you you brought some things for us to sample I mean I hate my job as you can tell yeah it's, it's awful it's awful to do this yeah. all day um, so the first one I did bring and this is um, Bjornstadt Cellars mm -hmm. um, Greg Bjornstadt is um, mm -hmm has been our, one of our staple um, gay winemakers on the big gay train for the last couple years. Mm -hmm. um, he was originally at Flowers and now has his own oh, label. Oh, I love Flowers. Yeah, it's a great wine out at the coast. Uh -huh. um, and Greg started his own label, Bjorn Set Cellars, and makes this wonderful, wonderful Chardonnay. Um, this is the 2009 vintage, I think. And it's, um, you know, if you smell it, you're going to get, you know, some vanilla and a little bit of spice. Yeah, and you and Chardonnay, yeah. I, I've never been, Chardonnay is probably my least favorite yeah. white wine mm -hmm. because there's some reason that buttery taste um, to me is overwhelming, yeah. but this doesn't. He does a little less oak, I think, than most. You know, Chardonnays are getting a little more modern um, where they're doing a little more steel mm. fermentation. And this, this is. This is a little crisper. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Mm. It is nice. Well, you know. Very nice. So like, if you hadn't told me that this mm -hmm. was an openly gay yeah. vineyard, um, I wouldn't know. Right. Has the has this idea become big enough now where there can be a section for, let's say people want to say, you know, I want to support my community. I want to buy an openly gay wine. Right. You know, it'd be great to have that on a shelf. There's a few places, <laughs> wine stores in the, in the Castro, it'd be great to do that, actually. Yeah. It's something to approach them. We've been flirting with the idea of having an out in the Vineyard Wine Club. Mm-hmm. You know, so people would know that there's what gay wine or right. gay supporting wine. Well, I know there's a wonderful uh, gourmet wine and cheese shop in the uh -huh. North Bay, Sophie Sellers. Yes. That's owned by a couple, uh, David DeFries and, and John Haggard. And right. boy, they'd probably be all over this like a cheap suit. It, I'm telling you. You know what? I'm going to have to reach out to them. Yeah. We're uh, getting gearing up for the, uh, the wine train again. So every year again, we chart out the train, five winemakers, five course custom paired dinner. Mm, this is lovely. Isn't that nice? It's sort of, uh, sort of creme brulee in a glass. Yeah. You know, really, really nice. One of my favorites. And then the second wine we have is a, has been a big supporter. La Crema um, has been, was uh, every June at Father's Day, we do Gay Wine Weekend, mm -hmm. which is three days of events. Um, gay winemaker, uh, winemaker tours, um, winemaker dinners, um, a giant AIDS mm -hmm. fundraiser tea dance. Yeah. Meaty. It is, this, is, this is a very earthy pinot. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of spice, a little bit of leather. Mm -hmm. You know, perfect for the San Francisco crowd. I was about to say, you, happening. You know, you're coming up with all the marketing buzzwords <laughs> for the gay community. It's pretty great. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's very nice. Very, very nice. You know, I, I just mm. recently went on a birthday wine tasting mm -hmm. with uh, my husband and, and three women friends of yeah. ours. And they specifically wanted to get away from Napa. Nothing against Napa. Yeah. But they're like, we... The feeling was, God, it's becoming a victim of its own success. I mean, that's probably good and bad. I mean, yeah. I mean, there, my point is, there are other places to think of other than just Napa for wine tours, correct? Well, there are, and you know, I think what's happened. We've been um, successful in helping to change, I think, the lexicon a little bit. People, until recently, probably the last eighteen months, would mm -hmm. say, "I'm going to Napa," and well, where are you going? And they could end up at Flowers. 
right? Or they could end up in Mendocino County or um, somewhere in Sonoma. And mm -hmm. for them, Napa was ubiquitous for wine country. Right. And what's happening now, especially within the gay community, people are saying, we're going to Sonoma. Right. I'm going to A little hipper. It's a little, a little hipper. hipper. You know, what is it's that you're saying, being on the know because you're in the know? Because <laughs> you're in the yeah. know, absolutely. In our last few moments, I yeah. want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, something that, at least to me, put part of Northern California's wine mm -hmm. country on the map. My understanding is the, well, I actually saw it, I admit it, guilty pleasure, confession yeah. time. The Real Housewives of New Jersey yeah. came up in very luxurious <laughs> RVs to Duncan's Mills and wine country. Now, I told that story to you before we started the yeah. tape rolling, and you told me that oh, I have a family connection to The Real Housewives, which has <laughs> got to be the gayest show on TV, so come on. I'm going to get killed for this. Sorry, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, I have an identical twin, straight twin brother, uh -huh. who works for The Real Housewives. Franchise. Franchise. And um, I'm trying to get him to do something on the train this year. In fact, I'm going with... Uh, with uh, with the owner, he's coming with us to see Barbara Streisand in New York. Wow! Um, in a few weeks, so we're gonna we're gonna try and convince them. Maybe we could do uh, maybe bring some of the the Beverly Hills housewives on the train. Beverly Hills, or you know, one of the housewives of, of New York, uh, I think has her own Sauvignon Blanc or something. I oh yeah, I didn't yeah. know that actually. Yeah. So boy, there's all kinds of connections. There is here. all kinds of connections. Real quick before yeah. we go, if someone wants to learn more about out in the vineyard and yeah. the tours you organize and just the work you're doing and right. maybe more about openly uh, gay or lesbian. Where do they go? Yeah. Out in the vineyard.com. That's great. Yep. It's been wonderful speaking with Thanks, you. Aiden. Thank you. Most delicious Thank guest you I've had in a while. <laughs> uh, from out in the vineyard to being out in old age, we're going to speak with Seth Kilborn of Open House, Senior Living for the LGBT Community. We'll be right back.